37 seconds of logos. Before Rome. Before Babylon. Who gives a f oration? Before the pyramids. There was Kandak. I see this movie went to the Themis Kardashian school of ancient kernel of truth, but overwhelmingly fake places. Akton's real goal was to forge the crown of Sabak. You would be forgiven for thinking this is a sequel, and the movie is just catching you up to speed on the previous film, but nope, this is just an insane wall of narration flashback and assaulting you in the first two minutes. If infused with the powers of the six demons of the ancient world, it would make Akton invincible. God damn it, I'm already exhausted. Get another f***ing piece of shit goddamn artifact in a movie that needs the 14 glues of the monkey spank squeeze box to work. To make the crown, he needed Eternium. But to get Eternium, he needed to locate Unobtainium, an element only found in the seas of f*** your mother junction near Tickle Lake Matink. <laughs> you guys are living in an oppressive regime. In what world do you think this guy is getting rewarded? This kid, who just reminded everyone who the real enemy is, really thinks this guy is gonna get rewarded and is shocked, shocked, I say, when this guy gets killed. This movie is trying so hard to be 300 that I can practically hear unwarranted demands for a Snyder Cut. This kid steals the Eternium from the dude who just killed the guy who brought it to him. Then he runs over to the quarry and holds the Eternium up in some sort of victory formation. Somehow all the miners down on the ground know what that means and start cheering, like they just heard the five tones of the ship from Close Encounters. The Council of Wizards. The magical guardians of the earth. That seems super glossed over. And turned a boy into a champion, but the crown had already been completed. Fucking what? How the f did the crown get completed in that time? We were told that the king needed a turnium to complete the crown, and they just found it a minute ago. How much fucking time passed? Because it feels like it was a minute or two, and not forged a crown infused with sick demons of the ancient world amount of time. In the ensuing battle, the palace was destroyed, but the champion was victorious. Sounds like a hell of a battle. Too bad we didn't see any of it, because the movie thinks the surprise is more important in this case than telling the story. The wizards hid the crown of Sabak so that it would never again fall into the hands of men. <laughs> you parallax the crown, which means someone is definitely going to find it. I can't figure out why the crown wasn't destroyed instead of hidden, but I guess you needed a plot and this was the best you could do, copying the many films that have used this exact premise a hundred times in the last 20 years. Today, Kandak is occupied by international mercenaries. Are you still talking? God damn! I feel like Tim Allen in a limo in Galaxy Quest. I'm gonna just shut my eyes, but I promise I'm still listening to everything you say. And then Black Adam continues, In the five million years, years following, following the, the Great, great nebula, nebula Burst, our people were one people, but then came the Zaktar migration, and then the Melosian shift. But legend says, whenever Kandak needs him most. F***ing legends, curses, fables, magic, tunes, limerick, spoken word, this movie has it all! The text here says Intergang Checkpoint Sector 5 North Shiruta. And even after nearly seven minutes of foie gras levels of force feeding exposition, I still have no idea what any of this means. This text might as well read Celibate Warehouse, Region Milk, North Feelings. When the kid gets up off the ground, a sudden flash comic shows up in the middle of the pile that was clearly not there a few seconds ago. Also, when the perimeter guard hits this kid, the kid goes to the ground, the skateboard takes a bit of a tumble, and is that a fing gun? Whose gun is it? Nobody even addresses it. I guess guns are so common, they're like tumbleweeds. If it's got wheels, it's a vehicle. Back to the line, mate. Considering skateboards, cars. So wait, is the guard getting a notice about Adriana right now? Or is he just reminding himself who he's looking for? I feel like the scene would be a hundred times better if he gets this notification before the vehicle inspection. And we see Adriana hiding in the car while it's stopped at the checkpoint. But because surprises once again beat out actual storytelling, we get an image of a woman we haven't even met yet, followed by the reveal that she was in the car the whole time, and that's supposed to hit my movie-watching G-spot. With nothing happening, movie resorts to showing us people sleeping. Which is what we were doing if you saw this in the theater. Is that really turning up? Show us a little magic. Here, let me take a look at this necklace for no reason. It'll be a good conversation piece, an exposition starter. Are you sure about this? The inscriptions we found are clear. So wait, the wizards hid the crown so that no one could find it, but left inscriptions that give people an idea of where to find it? This movie is like a dumber Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Men were given the gift of magic. Why did you start reading in the middle of the wall when there is etched writing all around, above, and before what you were reading? The ultimate power was banished from the earth and hidden here. Congratulations on finding the secret hideout of the terrible power we don't want you to use. If you want to find it and keep it for yourself, go ahead. You've earned it. Turn back. That's what it says, no? Yes. Other things it could have said include nothing. Just nothing. Everyone who walked into this mountain would have been like Sergeant Al Powell in Die Hard, and about ten steps into the place would have been like, ah, the hell with this. Speak not his power. Again, she has just started in the middle of the ancient text, like a mad person. 
It's all about the context regarding Speak Not His Power that lies in the dozen lines above this that you chose not to read. The slave who became champion and defeated the king. The legend was true. Just because someone etched a thing in a stone doesn't mean it was true. Haven't you ever read the Bible? So they came down here to find a crown that was hidden for all eternity. Not pictured. A crown that is in any way hiding. If she falls, she dies, and she has no idea how or why the crown is floating in the air, or if it can even be grabbed and removed from its floating position. And she still risks her whole ass life with this really stupid jump. Doesn't matter she succeeded, that was a really stupid jump. Oh great, a superhero who already seems way too strong from the very start. Superman on Sterox. Also, the movie rips off the shower of bullets scene from Superman Returns. Imagine shooting this guy ineffectively for a full minute, then reloading because you think more bullets will do the trick. As The Rock destroys all the fools one by one, I have to ask why he's doing it one by one, given what we see him do later. Black Adam uses his lightning power to create a tunnel so that he can get out of here, but didn't he just fly out of the opening at the top of this mountain to kill a bunch of bad guys? Why the f*** did he need to do this? It's at this point the movie whips out the Rolling Stones' Paint It Black, which is the song that makes everything seem great no matter what. It's basically cheating. Other choices include Peter Gabriel's Salisbury Hill, Queen and David Bowie's Under Pressure, Sonic Youth's cover of Superstar, and giving Matt Damon a cameo. This section where Rock slowly flies through all the military mayhem and deflects all munitions that threaten him personally, that reminds me how much influence a single star can have over a film and how bad that often ends up working out for the average viewer. Oh, so we're about to find out that Eternium can hurt Black Adam, so it's basically kryptonite. The question now becomes, why didn't this army have more Eternium weapons and are only just using them at the very end of the battle when nearly all of them are dead? I told you to make it look real, not punch me in the face. Why did Ishmael need to bring all the mercenaries in? As soon as Adriana secured the crown, he could have shot her immediately and taken off with it. For the scriptwriters, the mercenaries were brought in so that Adriana would be held at gunpoint and say the words to summon Black Adam. And we know Ishmael needs Black Adam for his plan, but there's no way he knew that would happen. And there's no indication it was even on his radar. So why didn't he just put a couple slugs in Adriana and run off with the crown? Basically a tornado with a 167 IQ. Sounds delightful. But please tell me you found someone who can pack a punch. Every time Carter tells Waller about one character, she's like, yeah, that's great, but you know what? You really need someone who has such and such power. And Carter's like, I haven't finished telling you the team yet, but the love of God, let me finish, all in service of the full character bio sequence that adds nothing to these movies. It takes magic to fight magic, and the man's got nearly God-level powers. As we hear this said about Kent, we see Kent wave his hand and a gold helmet appears, and that does not say God-level powers to me, personally. Are you sure they can take him? Waller, you find us a cell that can hold him, we'll take care of the rest. Except you can't and you won't. Black Adam, as built by this very movie, is too powerful for you to capture and too strong for any cell to hold him. This movie is just over two hours and it's because of fucking stupid ass dialogue like this. I gotta be honest here, I'm only barely aware of Hawkman as a character. I'm certainly not ready to just accept that he has a mansion five times cooler than Professor X does. We're the Justice Society. Am I supposed to get goosebumps now? Feels like the movie wants me to get all goosebumpy right here, because they said the name of the thing. But in reality, I'm just very exhausted by this film. and sad that we're only just now barely one-fourth of the way through. Is this entirely made out of nth metal? Everything down to the screws. <laughs> so, nth metal is now a thing? Is it shorthand for Turnium Last Foreverkus? It takes a lot of energy to smash atoms. This movie is called Black Adam, and we know more about these chodes than him at this point. I grow. You know, like Ant-Man and Captain America Civil War, but it's completely unique and unheard of. So how about giving me those digits? I really started taking this movie seriously once they ripped off the X-Men jet taking off from the grounds of Professor X's mansion. They put this guy, who is definitely over six feet tall, in a child's bed to recover from his injuries. Also, how the f*** did they drive Teth Adam back to this house? Were they not driving him in a van that should be known to the bad guys at this point? How did they get past the checkpoints and sh**? I was so worried about Black Adam's injury until I found out he could simply patch himself up with his own lightning. Why the f*** did he do that back at the mountain? Life is the only path to death. It's total bullshit. This is the first time she's translating this. Why the f*** did Black Adam decide to sit down on this kid's bed and chat with him a bit? This asshole has a copy of Three Ninjas and f***ing Left Behind in his VHS collection. And somehow this guy with terrible taste also has Casablanca. Prove your strength. Destroy your enemy and all he cares about. Are you unaware of the concept of people being enslaved or oppressed by a stronger power? I know you aren't. 
because you're either the kid we saw get the powers at the beginning of the movie, or you're someone else who was part of that society back in the day. Why do you think these people can take care of their own problems? I want to know how this asshole dug a fucking tunnel through the floor down into what looks like an air conditioning vent. Is the movie saying the air vent in Amon's room is in the floor? And it leads down to the floor below? Or was this made? You definitely need a catchphrase. Something blackout badass to say right before you absolutely cook some dude. Oh, so I guess this movie is like a remake of T2 with this kid playing John Connor teaching the Terminator how to say hasta la vista, baby, and shit. My point is, you could be famous. Magazines, lunchboxes, video games. Are lunchboxes still a thing? Is this the 80s? Didn't everyone's mom sell these off to yard sale barons who are probably rich now? You've seen as many different futures as I have. You cease to believe in absolutes. I guess the part of DC's Doctor Strange will be played by Pierce Brosnan in this movie. And look, I know Doctor Fate predates Doctor Strange. The point is not who came first, but how tired I am of all these characters from two large comic book universes that overlap so much. I can't get excited about any of them anymore. Almost as much as I've missed having you around to ignore all my advice. These two sound like quite the pair with a rich history. Too bad I have to hear about their relationship through half ass exposition. Bad plan is better than no plan at all. Actually, this is patently false. No plan at all is how we get the David Tyree Super Bowl catch. A bad plan is the Colts suspecting the Saints might do an onside kick, but sending out fourth string wide receiver Hank Basket as part of the hands team. Like, Kent is literally possessed when he puts it on. Is this supposed to be a Black Adam movie or a new Suicide Squad disguised as a Justice Society film? This is like watching that Batman Assault on Arkham movie all over again. If he's so powerful, how are we supposed to stop him? If we can get him to say the word Shazam. Teth Adam will lose his power. Jesus Christ, this is like those Super Friends cartoons from when I was a kid where they had to get Mixelplick to say his name backwards in order to defeat him. And they always did! I see that every time Teth Adam has a flashback, it's just going to tell us the exact same thing over and over again until it's ready to reveal the truth just at the right moment. This kid steals a military radio and sends a false message and then gets chased around the city by inept dickheads. And this is Aladdin, only updated a bit for technology's sake. Gotta stay one jump ahead of the narcos, one leap ahead of the badge. These guys don't appreciate I'm rad. There's no f***ing way Adriana caught up in time to stop her kid from being slapped in the face. Did you see all the skateboarding and he did to get here? What was she doing to keep the pace? This movie is also like Hancock. End of sin. While it's cool that Black Adam is stopping all these bullets with his hand, why bother? He could stop them with his dick if he wanted. Movie you waste time with the, the good, the bad, and the ugly parody, seeing that Teth Adam is in no danger of dying like Eli Wallach, I don't see what this is supposed to accomplish for us. I mean, whether he's a quick draw or not doesn't mean shit here. Fade and I'll take the lead. Listen, you two hang back till we call you. The most powerful being anyone has ever faced will not require our whole team just yet for some reason. We're the anvil, you're the hammer. Awesome! Sounds great. Wait, the anvil is just the thing the hammer slams against. You might think you are the first wave, but you're just the preamble. You just plop down there. Then the hammer does the real damage. My point is that this is a bad analogy. Force is always necessary. What does that even mean, though? I see some DC characters don't give a shit about fighting in the streets even after Man of Steel's horse shit. Didn't Hawkman just save two awful bad guys from falling to their deaths a minute ago, talking about due process? Now he's just gonna put innocent people in danger because the movie needs a fight scene? A couple of CGI characters fight each other in the sky for a bit. What ifs? I don't know why Cyclone, 167 IQ and all, thinks that surrounding Adam with all these metal rods is going to contain him, especially with what she's seen. But it's probably such a high level play that I can't understand it. Discount Deadpool. This guy I barely understand unleashes an attack I barely understand that somehow causes massive pain to the rock that I barely understand. Adam Smasher temporarily subdues Teth Adam with this move, so yeah, I can totally see why Carter didn't want him in the battle at first. Makes total sense. Running on someone's balls. We have been living under military occupation for 27 years and never seen you before. This might hit a bit harder if the movie leaned into it instead of only paying it lip service. I am so sorry, was that expensive? Is Adam Smasher basing his entire personality on Tom Holland's Spider-Man? And Ted Adam, we had seen more on Oscar. Movie continues the sad Hollywood tradition of underusing Jaimon Hansu. Let me teach you some history that you've never learned in one of your mother's classes. You know, it was my own personal stall tactic so that Kareem can sacrifice himself and distract me while you take the crown back. Okay, great, he found a clothesline to zip down using his skateboard, but earlier when Teth Adam was floating through all the floors, I don't remember seeing any clotheslines going across entire sections of open space that could be used for this purpose. There were clothes hanging on the railings, but not these convenient zip lines for an easy escape. Release the child. Whatever you say! True, this might kill Amon, but you don't have the crown now, and you just let go of your only leverage in the situation. What? Bikes? This entire sequence reeks of Endor and the speeder bikes of the Rebellion, but also seems to be a lazy copy of the alien 
alien attack vehicles in Marvel's The Avengers. And I think the sin is ultimately for the derivativeness of this schlocky bullshit. Smasher, Cyclone, what are you waiting for? Probably for your signal, since the last mission required them to sit on the ship with their thumbs up their asses until you told them otherwise. Then the Rainbow Tornado Girl dropped a thingamabob, and that made all the difference. Hey, careful, dude. I almost hit you. I guess we can blame Adam Smasher for not keeping his hand gestures to a minimum here, but why is Hawkman flying directly over his shoulders in the first place? Thing running from Black Adam uses alien NOS, and that has to be a nod to The Rock's appearance in the rundown. For no good reason at all, the movie makes it seem like Black Adam finally caught up to and saved a month, only to pull the rug out and show you that he didn't, for no good reason. The champion's coming for you, you know that, right? I'm counting on it. You are? But for him to follow you, it required him to smash through this building and just happen to see a flybike zipping through the buildings at the perfect moment. That is insane. The nanobots did most of the work. Casual nanobot surgery is casual. Well, the wind thing is called aerokinesis. And the nanobots were injected into my bloodstream by this really messed up scientist who kidnapped me when I was 15. Jesus. I mean, damn. Anyway, so the nanobots inside Cyclone that turn her into wind can also take care of bullet wounds and save Adriana's brother? Amazing that the evil scientist injected you with the multi-purpose nanobots that can do anything a script tells them to do. I suppose they didn't have doors in your day. Well, of course we did. That's how we entered rooms. God damn it! Then why does he? God damn it! He is not our mine in the desert. I can show. Him! True to form, Teth Adam doesn't even get the location of the mine before trying to kill the prisoner. But luckily, when he goes back to tell Adriana about it, she knows where it is. Then the problem is solved without him realizing what a horrible error that is, so that he can keep doing Black Adam stuff without thinking of the consequences. Why does Hawkman bring the prisoners back to Adriana's apartment after Teth Adam nearly killed them a minute ago? Why not put them on the ship? Besides, I thought the Justice Society's main goal was taking Teth Adam prisoner and the crown was only secondary. Oh, I know why, because they're going to have a stupid fight and it's going to lead to them finding the crown in Ammon's room. Great. Grand. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. Les? Yeah, we're going to check out this movie for a while. Let me know when Hotman and Black Adam stop fighting. Well, if you're doing that, you can reach me on my cell phone. This fight is edited in a weird manner, where the emphasis and focus is on what the fight does to the walls and the shelves full of DC references. But we're not seeing much at all of what this fight is doing to the two combatants. It should be buried under the ocean for eternity. It's not far from what we had in mind for you when this is over. Or I could bury you with it. I care as much about these two measuring d**ks as I did when Hobbs and Shaw did it. And you, you will work together. Adam and Hawkman end up working together because they get mom shamed. There's still time to change the future. Shoot. Earlier, you were telling the comic relief dude that he wasn't going to die today, but by electricity. But you didn't tell him he could change the future. In fact, you acted like it was set in stone. We move through the mine inch by inch until we find Amon. So you guys are really going to take a civilian, Adriana, into this f***ing operation? I know she's Amon's mom and is insisting to go, but you can just say no, right? Whoa, how the f*** did Adriana and the Justice Society get down here so quickly? Black Adam just crashed through here seconds ago, and he had a huge head start. Nobody has to die, we just want the crown. Ishmael assumed he could lure Black Adam here, and somehow the crown would come along too, and that's exactly what happens. What if Ishmael got back here, and he didn't kill the biker who could have told him where the mine was? Would Ishmael have been able to leverage Teth Adam to find the crown? And how so? The kid is the only one who knew where it was. This is a classic case of a movie arranging its plot to fit what it wants to do rather than anything that is remotely logical. Believe me, nothing good will come from that crown. That's what the doctor told my mother just as I was being born. And you have just given me everything I need to become the next king of Kandag. Hey, Gumflap McGee, if you have everything you need, then stop talking and go be evil. My family passed the knowledge on, you know, one to the next. The crown crafted by our ancestors. Skip! How long are we gonna keep doing this? If the answer is anything except zero more seconds, I'm adding 5,000 sins. One for every year this story took to get told. Round it up to the nearest thousand. Arut was the true champion of Kondok. And he was also my son. Dun dun dun! Is this movie better now? Does this make all the difference? Holy sh! Sudden thinner CGI Dwayne Johnson! They Chris Evans does ass! The wizards decided that he would be their champion. But after the champion's many victories, 
the king went after what Harut loved the most. Wait, what victories? Victories over whom or what? How was the king even still around after the champion was created? Did they have Mortal Kombat battles? Or was the champion picking people off Braveheart style in the middle of the night? Shazam. Shazam. Look at this whatever power. Why would the wizards create a champion who could just give his powers to anyone he pleased? I thought there was a vetting process involved. And why would you just be able to do this by saying one f***ing word? The powers were not a gift from the wizards, but a curse. Is Teth Adam saying that it's a curse because of what happened? Or is it an actual curse and the wizards are just dicks? Either way, I hate it. So the black suit just formed on its own because he was sad angry? His kid was a champion, no black suit. Kid gives the powers to Teth Adam, no black suit. Teth Adam's kid is killed and he gets sad. Sudden venom suit forms of its own volition. That's fucking weird. My son dreamt of a better world. That's why he saved me. And that's why I kill indiscriminately. I will speak the word my son gave me and I will give up my power. And when I do, you must ensure I never speak it again. The ease at which this power can be relinquished and summoned is really dumb. Why would you be able to call it back whenever you want once you give it up? Also, movie Superman 2's the title character so that a powerful villain can show up to wreak havoc for, oh, maybe 10 minutes? Don't black sight and secret location basically mean the same thing? As the plane rapidly nosedives into the water, Dr. Fate seems startled, but no one seems bothered by basic gravity, which would slam all of them forward suddenly, perhaps into the windshield even. You know, they say the gods created us, but we're the ones who always wind up burying them. What the f does that even mean? How many gods have you personally buried, lady? This is some truly sh dialogue. They'll know how to deal with him, to keep him from regaining his powers. They'll keep him in suspended animation. And he'll be in a state of bliss. Can't keep my mind from the circling sky Tongue tied and twisted Just an earthbound misfit eye Somehow the Task Force X has dozens of people that need to be in no talky water cells, but they keep them widely spread out in a super warehouse the size of Oklahoma that has too many huge ass support beams and a floor that is covered in water for some reason. This is actually the stupidest set I've ever seen in movie history. You mother built this black site underwater in Arctic temperatures so you could demonstrate the absolute worst use of space in the history of mankind? In Kanaki mythology, the souls of the damned are sent to the rock of finality. Do they smell what the rock is cooking? Death is the only path to life. You flip the f***ing crown upside down and the only thing that changed in the message of the symbols is the position of the words life and death? Please go back to preschool story hour, you f***ers. He kidnapped Amon on purpose because he knew that Teth Adam would kill him. I certainly hope he kidnapped Amon on purpose because if he did it accidentally, this is a completely different movie. Wait, maybe I do want that. And he believed the champion's magic would send him to the Rock of Finality. What was Ishmael's plan from the beginning, though? All he wanted was the crown. The only reason Teth Adam showed up is because Adriana summoned the champion when she was held at gunpoint. Was Ishmael planning for this to happen? Was his original plan to maybe steal the crown and summon the champion himself? If that's the case, was he sure that the champion would use the blue lightning on him? Because he could have just been one of those dudes who got slammed up against a rock or dropped from the sky. There's no way that Ishmael knew any other shit he did was going to happen. The movie cleared the path for him. What the bloody hell is that? Can't you see the future? Readout says it's a demon, Sabat. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Did you say the readout told you that this was the demon that has never ever showed his face in the history of man until now? The f***ing readout? You're telling me a computer got a bunch of data points from a satellite and spat out a readout that said, Sure as that's the goddamn demon Sabak! You gotta love how just because this ship is made of nth metal or whatever the f that it can withstand a fire powered by what is supposedly six demons in one. <laughs> What good is Dr. Fate if he can't see and prevent this? And if you give me any of that, he can see all futures at once like Dr. Strange bullshit. I will punch you into the afterlife. Ah! Gotta say, this demon is pretty f***ing underwhelming. I think the nun could beat this asshole. Carter, for the first time in 100 years, when I look ahead, I see nothing. Oh my god, Dr. Fate was Tilda Swinton all along! Fair Adam. I know you can hear me. So Fate Dude sacrifices himself while calling Black Adam to recruit him to kill Devil May Care here, instead of just mind calling Black Adam before he went and thereby sacrificing no one? Why, Thomas Crown? Why? Oh, I didn't know thin, non-powerful Teth Adam was such a badass without a Shazam powers. Lucky for the movie, he is. Teth Adam continues doing hand-to-hand -hand combat instead of ripping off the mask and yelling Shazam! The world doesn't always need a white knight. Sometimes it needs something darker. If only DC had this kind of night that is dark to play with, maybe they'd have something there. Also, if Black Adam was a guy who could control his powers, they wouldn't even be in this mess. So no, 
The ends do not justify the means. In this case, the world just needs a guy with your powers who can keep it in his pants for once. I don't know. Bad analogy. You know what I mean? Shut up. Hawk person sees the Dr. Fate shield collapse and then runs up the stairs like a regular person instead of, you know, flying up there rapidly like he is capable of doing. No! No. No one will be needing this anymore. Kareem X Machina. Of course, demons from the underworld are easily taken out via cane. I think I'm Takis Ma'atna good. Hero sees his family in the afterlife and someone tells him it's not his time, cliche. This f***er is still underwater. I refuse to accept this as a point of movie tension. This is just gross negligence at this point. It sure is a good thing that Ted Adam knew exactly where he was in the ocean to zip over to Kondok in time to save all these people from the giant statue. You gotta hand it to him. He's got tremendous GPS. I'm glad Black Adam talked himself into awakening for the big finale, but where did the f***ing cape come from? Let the fate of Kondok be decided by a true battle of champions. F***ing Hal has a more intimidating voice than this demon. I do have to ding DC here for copying the MCU with the same versus same finale battle situation. <laughs> Okay, slow motion skateboard kid in his own cape with a legion of normies behind him is my new most hilarious film scene of all time. I'm going to add five sins just to give me time to recover from the laughter. This is utterly stupidly hilarious. You can control it! I know Black Adam has learned some lessons and shit, but I don't know what it means to control this power. We don't know enough about his rage to really know one way or another what kind of Herculean effort this might be. The movie is basically just gonna say, yeah, he figured it out, and we're just supposed to be fine with that shit. After Black Adam tears Sabak in half, of course, all the underlings fade into nothingness, and it immediately renders the Kondaki fight meaningless. Be excited all you want, guys, but you didn't do sh**. In fact, if it wasn't for Hawkman and Black Adam, it wouldn't have mattered if you killed every last skeleton in the place. See you around, old friend. Why does the helmet just leave? Why was he able to use it one last time before piecing out? It's his darkness that lets him do what heroes like you cannot. Also, wizard power. Darkness, sure, but in the end, wizard power. Black Adam sits on the throne, but then destroys the throne, and I have no feelings here at all. So what should we call you? Ah, that old nugget. The old what should we call you, and the movie literally rolls credits with the name. Lovely. This movie is so creative. This might end up being one of the most infamous cameos of all time, but even so, it's still stupid. should be buried under the ocean for eternity. Light him up. Five thousand years. Ten thousand years will give you such a crick in the neck. View ultimate futures to see all the possible outcomes of becoming confident. How many did you see? 14,605. Yeah, well, bad plan is better than no plan at all. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. the child. Very poor choice of words. Hey, Vickers, I was wondering, are you a robot? My room, 10 minutes. There's always a bigger fish. Not all heroes wear capes. No capes! Mission accomplished. I felt a great disturbance in the force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced.